So this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's Monday, March 3rd, 2014. We're in room 307 at the Town Office Building, 37 Shattuck Street in Littleton, Mass. And I'll open the Zoning Board hearing. We have a quorum. We're missing uh, one member, John Quintino. Uh, Alan, I'm just going to appoint you as a voting alternate for this first thing if we have to take a vote. So the administrative matter that's scheduled for 8.30 p.m. is to appoint a housing committee member. Mr. Bergman, you're here, so would you just tell our board what you need and we'll see what we can do. Sure, thanks very much. The uh, <coughs> town, uh, through the Board of Selectmen, uh, is, has uh, contracted with our regional planning agency, MAPC, to update the housing production plan, which was last updated in 2000. Some of you may have been active back in those days when that document was worked on. Uh, we, uh, we have a housing committee that's been uh, reestablished uh, in, in the last several months. That housing committee will serve as sort of a steering committee uh, to work with MAPC and its housing consultants on updating our housing production plan. In order to have a broader cross-section of town boards represented on that housing committee, the Board of Selectmen recently expanded its membership to include uh, one member each from the Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, and uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, has uh, designated Jim Carr to be its rep, uh, Rich Crowley from the Planning Board, uh, and, uh, and we'd like also to have a uh, member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, in part because of, you know, from, from my observation working with town boards, the, the one that actually deals most with <coughs> affordable housing issues is your board. And I think that it would be important to have that perspective on, uh, on a uh, process that will be updating a housing production plan. Uh, it will, uh, th that process will be going on between now and October. The, the report uh, update would be would be due by October. Uh, we will have a number of public forums over, over the course of that, that uh, period. Uh, we're going to try to uh, use your uh, <coughs> the time of the housing committee uh, judiciously and, and not have more meetings than necessary. <coughs> I indicated to the planning board when they asked that it would probably be about one meeting a month. Uh, between now and October, but we did want to uh, make sure that in order to have this be a meaningful exercise for the community that we populate the steering committee with people who who were who knew about the subject matter. And, and it would be important, therefore, I think, very important to have a member of the, of the ZBA included. And I hope that you will uh, see your way clear to either appointing or volunteering. Uh, <laughs> One of, your, one of your members. And certainly, when we're having the public meetings and the public forums, input from everyone is, is, is welcome. So, um, this has been a subject near and dear to Cheryl's heart about achieving the 10% and staying above the 10% and simultaneously working on a housing production plan for Littleton so that if in the next census we drop off the, the 10%, um, as Keith has said, hopefully this town will have taken and done something proactive so that we are not at risk of having another 40B uh, that's, that's not it a friendly is, one. It is indeed near and dear to my heart. My problem is I figured I worried that I would have to recuse myself too often. I work with several builders that are looking forward to building some of these um, houses on different land, et cetera, and I'm worried that uh, I would have conflicts of interest too often, quite frankly. Okay. Uh, anybody else on the board have an interest in uh, being the delegate to such a committee that would meet you? Walked in a little bit late. It's a one, once a month possibly uh, commitment to work with a steering committee that's going to try to start the process of working with MAPC. To, to we will be updating the housing uh, production plan by October. The, the, we have a contract with them. It's a $20,000 task, of which $10,000 is coming from MAPC. The other 10 comes from the town appropriation. And it, it has a definite end date to have the, the project. Um, 
Any of the alternates have an interest in doing this? Yeah, I'm, I'm way too busy. Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> out. I volunteer. Thank you, John. With your background and everything else. I, I'm familiar with housing patterns in the general areas. So. We are grateful and Thank you. think that you're the right choice anyway. Thank you. Want to do a motion? Yes, please. We have a motion that we appoint Jeff Yates as the Zoning Board of Appeals member to the uh, Housing Committee. Uh, and, uh, John, since you arrived late, I already uh, selected Alan to be the voting alternate for this particular motion, okay? Yeah. So, uh, can I have a second to that motion, please? I'll second. second. Patrick seconds. All no, those he can't. He's not a voting member. Second. Second by Alan. Alan, okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, service. Patrick, because you can always vote when you're a voting member. <laughs> <No>. <coughs> Okay, now we have all of our uh, regular members here, so we will open the 715 scheduled continue he continued hearing for case number 795B, Village Green, 15 Great Road, L2, LLC, uh, on a request for modification to a comprehensive permit dated February 14th, 2013. Um, Where's the best of mine? I just had a couple of housekeeping matters, please. That is, when we left last time, we had a draft decision circulating. The draft decision committee uh, worked very, very hard, the subcommittee, um, and mostly at the tail end here, a lot of work was done by Chris Heap, uh, David Hill and his counsel. I guess Lou's not here tonight. Alex, you can take the accolades for Lou. <laughs> <laughs> I know Leslie had a, had a lot of work put into this. I think um, um, Sue had a lot of work put in, and I know Bill stayed up many nights reading and rereading. I get tired of reading it when I see so many drafts coming around, so I wait till the dust clears, and then I read. It's a good thing I'll be tired. <laughs> so um, we also had put out to the membership that if they had comments, they were supposed to be received by a certain death. Oh, I, I didn't give Ed uh, credit. Ed worked very hard, too. Um, and we put out to the membership that they, if they had comments, we were supposed to have received them by a certain deadline. So we didn't receive board member comments. We received an awful lot of comments from Ed, which were extremely helpful. Um, I got to say the applicant and his crew were helpful in bringing it all together. And we're down to maybe two or three things right now that will be minor, I hope. But before we get to that, we also had outstanding the drainage uh, peer review from Graves. Graves, engineering. Graves Engineering. So a letter came in on that. It should have been circulated to board members. Uh, essentially, why don't you give us a summary because the letter came in, then I saw places responded to it, and I think we're in a pretty good place on that right now. Can I ask a quick question? Do yes. we have copies of the latest, the greatest? Yes, that was circulated about. No, do we have copies for us here today? Oh. Was circulated by um, by Shelley earlier in the week, and then there were about four sections Copies that what? the latest decision yeah. with the changes. Chris has changed it. In, did no, you the last one you circulated was about Monday or Friday. I, I went away for Friday. You circulated it Friday. Yeah. That's the latest. I have um, a handful of copies of the slightly updated version of that one that circulated on Friday. Okay, so from Friday there were about three clauses and I requested that no more get circulated because I think sometimes when there's so many of them running around it doesn't can help anything. Can I put my hands on one of the handful for now? It, well, I won't it, pull it apart, it, I promise. Can we reference the date of whichever draft we're using because like, I got a dozen different drafts and a dozen different dates. This so. one has today's date on it. Today I carefully didn't bring mine because you uh, won't have today. I got confused right. last time. The latest, latest I have is 225. This is March 3rd. You won't okay. have today's no. because I asked him not to say it. Right. So March 20, what's yours? March 20, uh, 225. 225. And that's what I would have been the last comments on. 
No, because we'll see how far we get and see if we need them. Everybody's been through it so many times that at this Thank you. at this stage, I'm ready to say we need one to sign. I mean, we need one for the purpose of signing. They're all so confusing. Um, so, you're giving me an update on the engineering case. Um, so the the, uh, the the layman's version of uh, the letter from Graves was that the stormwater management system met DEP standards, and he had a number of, of minor issues uh, that I wouldn't even call issues, um, and uh, places uh, was kind enough to write a letter responding to all of those issues that I think demonstrate that um, we've adequately responded to to their comments and the last version of Chris today contained a provision that speaks to that uh, I think it was um, 45 perhaps that sounds right uh, it says yes. it says essentially if we end up Closing the hearing today, it speaks to the applicant requested that the public hearing be closed after the ZBA received the hydrology and stormwater management review dated February 26, 2014, from its peer review consultant Graves Engineering, but before all of the matters addressed in that report had been fully addressed. So Sue Carter has addressed most of the matters which I saw. And I think you you referenced, and I, maybe we'll read Sue's letter into the record. I think you referenced that some of the notations on the plan had already been changed. And then uh, in the decision it says, um, so the ZBA, if we decide to close, it says we're amenable to closing subject to the condition that the applicant address all of the comments contained in the hydrology and stormwater management review. And if we could read uh, should we read Graves too? Could I see yours for a minute, please? So, basically, um, let's, let's do it this way, rather than read the whole letter. Basically, Graves says, we've reviewed the hydrology computations and found them to be in order except for the minor issues noted below. Uh, it says, hydrology computations and supporting documents indicate that the stormwater system could support site development as proposed on the plans Where identified. I'm reading number one from hydrology computations. Right here. <coughs> okay, sorry. And it says, on the post-development watershed plan, there are two subcatchments east of Building Three, labeled 482. It appears that the subcatchment with the trench drain is actually subcatchment 502, and should be labeled as such. And so, Sue has or will correct the post-development plan. I just didn't want to get you caught in a catch-22 of receiving new plans tonight, but they're very much That's fine. Changes. Number three, it appears that four nodes were inconsistently identified in the hydrology computations and on the post-development watershed plan. The following nodes, and they, they read them, um, and what they should read, and Sue, has an Sue from places has answered, the post-development plan labels will be corrected. So that's taken care of. Number four, Graves has said compliance with mass DEP stormwater standards for no discharges uh, are not unreasonable. No comment is necessary to that. Number five, applicant proposes to prepare a construction phase erosion and sediment control plan and a long-term operation and maintenance upon completion of the construction plan set. In our opinion, the documents associated with standards eight and nine should be prepared uh, concurrent with preparation of the construction plan set. So number five uh, agrees that they will update and include with the construction set submitted to the building inspector. Number six reads top of berm elevations and stormwater basins will need to be adjusted. Uh, at least one foot of freeboard as measured from the peak water surface elevation to the top <coughs> of the berm during a 100 year storm event. And so uh, Sue's answer is that uh, the comment seems to be residual from previous letters, that those 
uh, base and A top berms and peak elevations have already been addressed appropriately in every instance. Is that right? Seven, um, the stormwater basin near Unit 24 will have impounded water within 10 feet of the building and will have a two to one slope from uh, the building directly into the basin. Mass DEP <coughs> requires that impounded water must be at least 10 feet from a building. The slope into the basin must not exceed 3H uh, to 1V and there needs to be a 10 foot wide access way around the basin including access between the building and the basin. Also, the stormwater basin needs to be revised to include an emergency spillway. Can we come back to eight? I have, I have issues with eight. We're not on eight yet. Okay. Number seven, um, why don't you tell me what that means? What, what that <laughs> means is um, we modeled it as a detention basin. My response is it was an existing depression that we modeled in the stormwater. And what we're trying to do is do minimal filling around the foundation for that. So while it was modeled as a basin, it is an existing depression in the soil that was modeled for both pre and post. So that's going to satisfy Graves on that. Right. Did you speak to him about that? And then the other comment about access to the basins. DEP typically wants 10 feet all the way around the basins to gain access to the basins. Um, what my office has found is just as effective is to essentially create an area where the grading allows someone to drive down into the basin so that they have complete access into it. So that's what we've provided. And we will clarify the location of that on the revised plans. And did you speak to him in I regards to this? I did not get a hold of him, no. But you will satisfy him on that one. Okay, eight. Um, again, paraphrase eight, save me the trouble of reading the whole thing. On eight, sure. what we did, we did a drip line recharge trench around the buildings. What current DEP standards say if you're going to do stormwater recharge area, you have to be 10 feet away from the foundation. Our reply to that is, is we're using a very simple method so that we don't have a lot of maintenance just as we've been using for the past 25 years of doing drip line recharge so when the water comes off the roof it gets into stone and recharges into the ground. I, I would like to talk about that because one of the questions and one of the issues that John and Jeff both have mentioned in the past and was water runoff from roofs and additions and flowing towards other people's basements kind of thing with the with the issue of the buildings being so close. Personally, I'd like to see dry wells and uh, the um, drip lines and the gutters going into dry wells. I don't think it's too much maintenance. And that's what they're saying DEP would normally would require to maintain it. Do you think that, I mean, those issues have come up. Certainly John had it up. Did you, were you talk? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I somewhat remember what we're talking about that I mean the system they have is I mean they're gonna have to maintain it other than that they're gonna have water in these basements and um, so mm. the thing is if you get into a dry well situation with gutters <coughs> gutters become a problem too. Especially <coughs> well, winter like this you could get ice back up I don't really like the gutters that much they, they become a problem on a building that size um, I won't be. Oh, I was talking about. We're talking about the single talking family about the houses. houses. The single oh, family oh, houses. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the pack buildings. No, the single family houses with the ones that are so tight to each other. Yeah. You, you were talking about the additions and runoffs and and water, and I didn't know if. Well, it only came up because the there was verbiage about extending the drip line recharge around the additions. Mm -hmm if they were made. That's how it came up. I have to agree with John's comment. I think gutters are a double-edged sword. They have to be I don't have them on my house oh. currently. And so this doesn't matter, I, but I'm curious about the 10 feet. Is that just to prevent the recharge impacting the basements or? DP has it, um, those are more for like the storm, the chambers that they build right. uh, to have the offset and I believe that it's as much for maintenance issues, so that if you have to go in and dig them up, 
you're not digging right up against someone's so this location doesn't have anything to do with the recharge it's just a practical matter of well I, it may be a combination of the two okay. they have it they require it from slab as well so i don't mm -hmm. see it so much as the volume of water as much as it's the physical location so that if if you have three houses going to one recharge area you have enough room to get a piece of equipment in to dig it up if it fails for some reason or other yeah. it would, but also too you have to keep in mind that the state building code mandates the grading around all the buildings to have a slope away from the right. building for eight feet that's so when water runs off the roof you don't want it to just Grip off and go directly in the ground at that point because then it backs up into the foundation right. and creates a problem. Right. Or we can't actually build up enough hydraulic pressure to come up underneath the slab. So you need to get the water running off the roof to run it away from the building, but still you want to recharge it back into the ground. I think to put this in perspective, what this is, it's a, a two foot wide stone trench, two feet deep, just to capture the runoff dripping off the roof. Um, and our detail shows everything is pitching away from the building anyways. So I think the key thing here is what we did was we sized it per unit type to say a minimum of X number of feet of trench and that um, we based it off of the worst case scenario of the worst soils on the site. So some of them are way oversized. Provided um, that the trench, if it's underneath the drip line, then it so designed <coughs> when the water gets into the trench will actually run away from the building. Again, you don't want water running down into the trench collecting and then soaking into the ground next to the foundation. You don't think it would be an issue with the buildings being, I mean, how do you get, when you have buildings this close to each other, does it become a practical matter to keep getting these slopes away from each other? No, no, and, and I've seen it done and you know okay. what I experience dealing with we have a water recharge and, and, and everything else and uh, groundwater protection overlay. Um, exactly what's been discussed here that you want to capture the water in, on the lot. But again, you got to balance it with the state mm -hmm. building code says. You got to drain it away just so you don't get water into the foundation or underneath it. So if they do the trench and everything else, which is a good idea, and I've seen similar, uh, allows this design such that it collects the water but then it channels it so that it gets away from the building, um, but still stays somewhat on site. You just don't want it running across the ground, out into the parking lot, then over to the pond across the street. Okay. That's mm -hmm. Number nine. All stormwater discharges to the infiltration basins are proposed to be treated by proprietary treatment devices. However, the plans do not yet show such a device at the discharge point into Basin A. And Sue so answered, DMH 4 plus 65 is proposed as a stormwater pretreatment unit. These are identified on detail sheet CP12 below the detail for the pretreatment unit, which is going to be acceptable and satisfactory. Right. Okay. For those of you who, there, we're proposing a Vort Sentry unit. Uh, another similar unit is a Storm Scepter or a CDS unit. So it's one that, uh, is accepted by DEP. Number 10, the plans do not yet show riprap at the stormwater discharge points. Riprap, uh, she answers, riprap is shown on the flared end outlet detail. The stone symbols will be added to the site plan for emphasis. <coughs> Number 11, on sheet PP2, in the profile view, the pipe between DMH 15 plus 50 and DMH 16 plus 0 was drawn at elevations that are too high. Um, and the less the invert elevations modeled in the hydrology computations were reasonable. Revise the plans and she adds that the visual representation of the pipe on the profile will be corrected to reflect the proposed inverts. Other utilities will be added to the plans and will be coordinated with the drainage design to avoid conflicts. And number 12, uh, Graves asks for uh, on sheets PP2 and PP4, the invert elevation from the uh, chamomile lane drainage system into the drain manhole at Boxwood Drive uh, station 16 plus 0 will need to be coordinated for consistency between the two plan sheets and she agrees the plan will be revised. So um, 13 just raises issues of making sure it gets done. Yeah. 
and that will be uh, a condition as suggested in that decision number four, uh, 45 of the decision that if we agree to close the hearing it's subject to the condition that the places does all of the uh, things that they promised graves they would finish doing okay so that brings us to anybody <coughs> questions on the decision the process the things that have been uh, bothering people back and forth over this whole process and um, I think I'm satisfied with that final round of uh, emails back and forth today we have one or two small matters so does anybody want to speak to the overall decision the process the concerns go ahead Patrick I'm concerned. I went to the uh, engineering department today. And I'm concerned about these three buildings. They're going to have 48 units, four story buildings at a time in the country when they're demolishing these high rise apartments, low rent housing. If you're putting four floors in, uh, into these buildings, you're going to start a breeding uh, breeding uh, crime. You're going to, you're not going to uh, build, uh, have uh, desirable people living in this, in this unit. I, I agree that it's uh, it's near the uh, Nagar Park area, almost in Acton. But why are we building buildings of four stories when this when the country is uh, demolishing uh, these high-rise apartments? What uh, on what? Give us an example of your statement that you think the country is demolishing. High rise well, they are. They're all over the country. They are. They're making uh, all these uh, low rent uh, housing. They're, they're making them uh, one story. Um, Mr. Marchant, want to speak to that, please? If I could um, give a little history on that. It is true that a number of public housing projects that will 100% low income, poorly maintained by the housing authorities, um, not uh, well designed. Uh, to begin with, have been demolished. These buildings are very different from those buildings. First of all, these are mixed income housing. The beauty of mixed income housing is that the developer has to build it and manage it to a standard that will attract and maintain people, residents who have choices. There will be none of those problems. Even the affordable units are affordable at 80% of median income. The rents are actually quite high. So I don't, that will not be an issue on these buildings. They'll be privately managed, they'll be managed well. I have no concerns about four-story buildings. And um, what, at one point you, you had mentioned rents, what you were going to be charging for rents way back in the beginning when you were going to be doing more of the rental program. Do you, is that something that you can speak to now? as to what your rent uh, you're looking like for for rent in these units? Sure. Uh, so th there, the buildings are a combination of uh, one, two, a few three bedroom units. The the one bedroom market rents will be around sixteen hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Market rents. The two bedrooms uh, will go from uh, around eighteen hundred dollars. Um, some of them will be a little higher than that. The three bedroom rents will be $22, dollars $2400 a month. And do you have to get these rents for this building, these buildings to be economically feasible? So these, these rents are market rents that um, are similar to the rents that, that are achieved uh, next door at the Avalon project and are achieved in many similar uh, institutional quality apartment complexes in the area. These are much higher rents than is achieved 
in Littleton at the build the 40B building we do have right next. What's the name of that uh, one? Pondside. At the Pondside. These are these are unreasonable rents for Littleton. Quite frankly, I'm trying to rent a two-bedroom house right now. A nice two-bedroom house on a nice lot with a big shed, lots of off-street parking, and I'm asking 1,300 for it, and that's top dollar. So I don't understand how you think you're going to get, this doesn't make sense. How are you going to get $1,600 for a one-bedroom apartment in Littleton? I understand that Acton requires, gets higher rents. They have a school system that's rated in the top 10 of the state. We don't, unfortunately. And we don't get those rents. So I, I just don't understand this. Can, I'm sorry. Can I, I just, I need to calm down your anxiety and maybe All right, sorry. why I think you're anxious. <laughs> I think, I think part of the anxiety, her, part of the anxiety is how to assure the board that you can pull the permits, build these buildings affordably, and not have another foreclosure sale on the for rent component. And we've seen it twice here in Littleton, so we are a little gun shy about developers, you know, promises about these things. And I think that's concerning Cheryl a lot because you still leave us with the ability now that we've allowed you to bifurcate the deal and have a for sale component and a for rent component i think you still leave us with this nagging feeling that what's to keep you from selling all the for sale units never pulling the building permit on the rental component and and abandoning the project either you your successor or the financial. or coming back to us or in two years another, yeah. and saying they're not economically feasible yeah. because they're not economically so, feasible. so don't Sorry. don't Raise your voice. If you asked a good question, let him answer it. Uh, so not only have we studied this uh, extensively, but we've had outside advisors study this extensively, do market studies. Uh, we have a number of, of um, term sheets from lenders. They've looked at, at market studies as well. The, the contrast between renting a house and renting an apartment unit in an institutional quality apartment complex with amenities like a pool and a clubhouse is just different. It attracts different people. We, we own and operate a similar building in the town of Tewksbury. The rents in Tewksbury are a hair lower, but we still get fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 for a one-bedroom apartment, and at the top end of that building, we get almost $1,800 for a two-bedroom. We have no three bedrooms. We, we also have no pool for a clubhouse because it's a smaller building. And so there's a, uh, a difference. You know, for instance, um, uh, Ames Pond, which is also in Tewksbury, which has 350 units, you know, they get $2,200 for some of their two-bedroom units because they have a nice clubhouse and a pool. And so, and there's, there's virtually no vacancy in the market in institutional quality apartment complexes in suburban Boston today. There is, there is just a, a terrific demand. So speak to the issue of what happens if all of this um, paper pro forma doesn't come to pass? What happens to the economics of this project if you're not able to get a 16, 18, and 2,200 dollar rents, but you're getting 12, 14, and 1,600 dollar rents, respectively? Eight. A thousand and fourteen hundred. <laughs> quite frankly, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, when we finance the project, the project will be financed with um, probably thirty-five percent equity and sixty-five percent debt. And so, if there's a problem in the future, the the value of the equity will go down. It won't go bankrupt. The 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 lending standards today are very very stringent. So the lender is going to expect that the debt service coverage uh, is, you know, 1.4 times, for instance. And that is a very, very comfortable margin. So they will, they will look at the model, they'll stress the model, they'll assume lower rents, higher vacancy, higher expenses, et cetera, and they still are going to see that there's enough cash flow to pay the debt. And, and that's... That's the, the, the lending environment that we're dealing with today, and we've done this work. Let in, let in. If, if I could just add a couple of things. Remember, 40B is a zoning process. This gives them the right, assuming they get a comprehensive permit, to prepare a final approval application. 
one of the requirements for a final approval application is that you have to show evidence of a financing commitment. And that's where the project really gets reviewed. It gets reviewed by the lender who's going to make the loan. The amount of money that a lender will um, lend is based upon their projection, their review of the applicant's pro forma. But if, in fact, they have concerns about rents, what happens is the net operating income, which really determines the size of the loan, will be lower. Therefore, the loan amount will be lower. Therefore, the equity that the developer has to contribute will be higher. So that's how it works. And, and then, as David said, if rents go down from that point, then the property is worth less. But it goes through that test at the beginning. Okay. Can I ask, I ask a couple questions, Fred? How do we protect ourselves from the scenario that the non-40B part gets built, the for sale condos get built, and then we end up back here being told that the apartment buildings aren't economically feasible and they have to be different and for sale. And how, how do we protect ourselves from that situation? There's no real way to protect yourself. If, if, at, if the applicant can't get a financing commitment for the rental, the applicant has a right to come back and say, you know, we're looking for a modification. Can we say that he can't build that until he gets this? Meaning the for sale and the Okay, we can't. Uh, he has to have financing for the entire project before he starts any of it. Can we say that? Well, um, I think the I think the issue here is that you've got a common piece of infrastructure, that treatment plant, that's very expensive. So the subsidizing agency that gives final approval will have final say over that in terms of whether or not they would allow the applicant to proceed with the for sale unit if, in fact, the financing isn't in place for the rental. But he has a whole that another treatment development. plan's not going to work very well if you're feeding it with only 56 for sale units, which are going to take a while to develop, and another subdivision. Those all take a fair amount of time. The beauty of rental is you build it all, and rent-ups have been occurring, you know, pretty, have been happening pretty quickly. But there's, 40 Bs are always subject to modification. All right. I understand they're always subject to modification, but I would like to see us put some kind of verbiage in the decision that requires him to have financing for the entire div division, because I really don't want to be back here in a year with... A, Drastic. I mean, the, the he came back in less than a year with very drastic changes. That what we looked at and approved a year ago is this is a totally different project. I mean, the buildings are all different. But but to your previous point, the reason they've done that is because the market. They were looking at rents that were much higher than what you just talked about. They were looking at three thousand dollar a month rents. So they the already houses. have gone through the process of adjusting the project to Littleton's circumstances. But I don't think they have adjusted the, the apartment buildings themselves is my, is my issue. And I, I think we're just, I mean, it's been a year, and I think I'm worried that in a year the for sale <coughs> component will be done, and we'll be back here looking at, you know, more for sales or an extension of the apartment buildings will be gone. Gee, the apartment buildings aren't working out. What really works are these for sale housing units. And we'll lose the benefit that we receive from the rental buildings. So, we, so do speak to it. We we have an, uh, a recorded agreement with the selectmen to keep a certain number of units in your in your housing inventory. So, you know, while it's theoretically possible for us to come back here uh, and ask for a modification, you know, practically speaking, it's not. This is the project. Let me let me ask a couple of things. I just did a quick math calculation, and it looks like I get twenty nine thousand gallons at one hundred and ten per bedroom per day. If I had four bedrooms on all of your forty A's and three bedrooms on all of the fifty six, which you don't have, you have less than that. Right. So what happens to the cost of a treatment plant for twenty nine thousand gallons? Is the cost it of the treatment plant is exactly the same. 
but I'm asking you, can you run a treatment plant? If you never build the rentals, can you run the treatment? Can you build and run the treatment plant affordably if it's only treating 29,000 gallons? Well, theoretically, you know, you could. Your, your cost, your operating cost per unit will be significantly higher. Uh, but, you know, at, at that point, it's not only the treatment plant, but it's the, um, it's the common road, the utilities. Um, you know, there's a, there's a huge investment in order to make the, uh, the for sale portion work. Okay, so that's one question. The next question is, we started this whole process hoping that you would pull the building permits by a certain date in February on the rental buildings. And as the process evolved, we didn't want to be held hostage to that date. But you, in good faith, have repeatedly s told us that it's your intention to pull the building permits on two of these buildings as soon as possible after you arrange the so financing. We've signed a contract to spend $235,000 for construction drawings um, on the apartment buildings. And we're 30 or 40 percent through that, so I, you know, I made a statement that we were going to be in a position to pull a building permit as quickly as we could, and we're following through on that, assuming, and we've made a huge leap of faith that you are going to sign this decision and approve the project, so we can do what we said we were going to do. Would it be reasonable to say that within six months, that would be that would be the case that you would be pulling such permits? Is that reasonable? If you're 30 percent done and you've just started this, or another possibility, is it possible that you that you could agree that before selling X number of the for sale units, you'll pull the permits, just to give some satisfaction to the board and the town, quite frankly, some comfort level? Well, you know, we we've already discussed the whole six month idea, and you you can't have a permit. That expires. No, you know, remember, that's not. That's yeah. not. So we no, we're not making this permit, but putting in this permit that you're required to pull. We're, we've already told you we're not even going to charge you for them until you actually start construction. You're saying you're already doing the plans. Um, if you've got, if you're thirty percent down on these plans that you're spending two hundred thirty thousand dollars for, surely they'll be done in six months. Yes. Does that seem reasonable? Eight months? Seven months? What, what, what's the reasonable time frame? So the, the plans will certainly be done. And the plans, I, I really need to get uh, a final financing commitment. So, it, but it, it, in, in order to get, uh, uh, to pull a building permit to go through the whole thing, I also now have to go through the bureaucracy at Mass Housing. Mass Housing. So we have to I do that for the whole thing. I have to do that for the whole thing. And the guy that we are dealing with is last day is Friday. So I'm going to start with somebody new. So, you know, I, I, if, if you ask me if I think it's appropriate that we're talking about this right now, I don't. Yeah, you know, I don't either, but it's here, and it's in front of us right now. We need to talk about it right now. Um, there has always been a nagging fear that you can go ahead and do the for sale component without doing the rental component, and it's reared its ugly head again. So. I'm looking for something in terms of reassurance or compromise. So is it terrible to ask you to, to have some building permits pulled on the rental buildings before you sell X percent of the for sale part? Or give I, us a timeline. And I understand his uh, uh, unwillingness to do timelines. I understand that. It, you know, it, the, what, what I can tell you is the more complicated and the more clause you put into this decision, the harder it is to finance and the less likely it is that we get you to 10%. And, you and you're asking me to think about, and I've got to think through, I know. you know, because lenders are not easy to deal with. Whether it's on the for sale side or the for rent side, you're, you're, you're going to make it complicated and you're going to kill it. And I think it's wrong and I think this discussion should stop. No, because when you came back to us in November, 
you said to us if we waived the cost of the building permits, you could pull all those permits by February. We, so I don't understand we when we sit here and us. talk to you about six months from now or even a year from now, you can't guarantee us that you will pull them. That's not reasonable on your part. Okay. Hold on for a minute again. Um, and I understand the mental process you have to go through. Is there anything at all you can offer to give? What's the host community agreement say about um, a timeline for reaching that? Did you, you, did you, you didn't bring that tonight? I have it. You have it. Can I say it for just one minute? There's a no. particular plot. Is it a, is it an appendix thing? It's, it's in the, um, the copy of the decision, but it's in miniature. I just want to say something in there that might. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Thank you. Condition 14 of the host community agreement does not have a timetable for providing the affordable units, but it does say any conversion of the 40B project will continue to contain enough units to keep the town over 10 percent. But I thought the entire agreement was predicated on their keeping the percentage in exchange for the 40A tie-in. The paragraph which is 14, which deals with the minimum they have to maintain, doesn't, does not mention the 40A. If the planning board issues their permit, there's a payment due. And they agree. There was a payment provided for in the agreement that was contingent on the planning board's approval of the developer's preferred subdivision, which was the open space subdivision. Which uh, the planning board then did. Which they did. And that payment's been made, right? Yes. If the 40B is converted in whole or in part from a rental to an ownership, which they're doing now, upon such conversion there shall be a sufficient number of housing units eligible to be included in the town's SHA, so the town's units are at least at 10%. There's no safety guards for us. No, this is a contractual <coughs> obligation with the town. I know, but there's no by any certain do date. It. So two years from now, we're back here yes. with another 40B. One of the things that I would say, and, uh, it's just brought up that the planning board asked for $100,000 um, to approve a plan that essentially already complied with the town's zoning, which, which we made. That wasn't we part were asked of us. To, we, we were asked to pay a $250,000 fee. We've made that payment. So what I, what I would say is that we've demonstrated our good faith, and I appreciate the fact that the board has been flexible and allowed us to um, to modify the permit to make it more uh, uh, economic. Uh, it's been a lot of work, it's been a lot of time, but I would say that we have and continue to demonstrate that we're going to build this uh, project and satisfy your requirements. And I would ask you not to make it more complicated and harder to finance. I'm trying, I'm trying really hard not to. And I understand where you're coming from, and certainly we had all of these discussions at the subcommittee meetings. I have a board member who's raised it as a, at least a significant issue to her. Um, I'm just asking you, is there any possible way you could give us some assurance that you will pull the rental permits before a certain percentage of the for sales are all sold? I mean, practically speaking, you almost it seems to me you almost have to. Well, yeah, then I'm going to have an underwriter uh, on on the debt side the for sale that it, you know is is going to take that into account. Counting and, units. And um, <coughs> you know, and and therefore it's not a permit. So so 
you know, I, I just, I don't think that that. Well, you, right. did a one to four, you did a one to four ratio on, you know, selling affordables to markets. That's kind of a standard provision. Yeah, but so know. can't we say something about a ratio of. Or give them a year to pull the permits on these. You know, it just. I mean, it's not going to cost. I don't understand why he couldn't because it doesn't cost him a penny. But sure, more. I don't understand what the permits have to do with. They could pull a permit and not still and not build it. Right. But yeah. once they pulled the permit, then it counts in our inventory. But then Until it slides the off again if they don't build under it. So that's ridiculous. I mean, it why long does it take it to slide off? It gives us an 18 month pass. It's well. an, an 18 months that holds us. It gives us 18 months for something to happen. And I, we're not. I, we've I, told him he doesn't have to that. pay anything mm -hmm. to do it. So why not ask him to do it? Why not get ourselves you that get bit of protection? Count. Hold on. You don't get to count until you get an occupancy permit at right. this point. Yeah, after it's gone 12, 12 months. So, so you, you pulling the building permit doesn't put them. You need right. an occupancy permit to get them it's on there. Is that true? That's not what it is. This isn't the original. I, this is after they come off already. Ed, can I, we I thought if you don't pull a building permit within 12 months, they go off the inventory. So these units are off the inventory. Because I think the date was February 14th. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, if you pull a building permit, they go back on. But if you don't have a certificate of occupancy within 18 months, he's, he's right. then they'll go off again. That, that, I think that's right. That was my. That was the point. That was the point I was making. Seals, which means we have to build them. So can right. that, the point I was making that, that that if the purpose of Pulling the permits was to was to create a fiction that that fiction goes away in eight, in eighteen months anyway. So we're just you know so the but I, I I would I would you know advocate in favor of fact rather than fiction. If you can the the other that aspect direction. that I see is as a possibility is that there's a struggle here to get this project completed. We can go ahead and consider other forty Bs. And yeah, but then we have this permit too. Well, but that makes it, it seems like it makes it more difficult for them to come back and change it. All right, so we have a 40B outstanding right now um, on the property behind the commons, your, your neighborhood. That one is under extension. They have another, what, year and a half? No, no. they have till June. June. They have yeah. till June. June of 2014. And to pull, to pull building mm -hmm. permits. To exercise their comprehensive permit. To exercise their comprehensive so permit. And then it expires. Or they can request or, an extension. Or they'll be back. Or they'll be back for an extension. And since we don't have the inventory, we because they haven't pulled permits, we're over the year with them, we don't have the inventory, I think we're already up a creek again. I, I Well, tell me if I'm wrong, though. If we have an approved 40B that just hasn't been built yet, doesn't that give us some... It gives. It would give you some argument when the applicant who's denied an extension appeals right. it to the HAC, and or, you would or say a new applicant made, comes. We've in. made some progress. Yeah, but there's no substitute for having the project, which, which is approvable and which you've approved, go forward and get built. I mean, there's no, there's no. Uh, the, the situation that we're in right now, the the the, the, the best outcome for preserving the subsidized housing inventory above 10 percent would be for the for the developer to here yes. to pull his building permits and start building it. Get his decision. So. Which, exactly. Which, so which we intend to do. Okay. So we one second. Please. What we don't, you know, it's there's, there's no sense in me agreeing to a decision that I can't get financed. And I need each component of this project to get financed. That was part of the, the purpose of of doing it this way and you know if I agree okay I, I you know will pull permits within a year and for some reason a lender is going to look at that and say well what happens if you don't the permit goes away so therefore you know for this component uh, I'm not going to consider it <coughs> it's just too complicated and you know we're we're demonstrating with our investment and our hard work that we're moving toward pulling building permits. I, I, would also like to, I would also like to add that 
we have vetted this project n not once but twice now through a series of modifications. We as a board have determined that uh, the project satisfies a lot of needs, uh, some rental housing, some elevated buildings, some uh, for sale affordable housing in the community. It's a nice project. The neighbors uh, demonstrated some satisfaction with all of the many concessions that you made to satisfy your grist mill neighbors. Um, the selectmen obviously have supported the uh, host community agreement. So I do think that at some point we just have to take a blind leap of faith. We had two projects fail. That's terribly unfortunate. I hope that's not ominous and that this project won't fail. Um, I hope you're a third of the way through your permitting on the rental buildings and you get those to come in for us. And we've we've demonstrated our good faith in dealing with you and trying to cooperate with you and so far you seem to have demonstrated your good faith in reciprocating and I, th I, I think we just almost I have to take I, a I'd like to make ask one more question first please yeah. I don't I'm what he I have a I can't imagine that a bank is going to find the fact that the building permits are already pulled and ready to go to be detrimental no what he's saying is if you put in the decision that he's got to pull the rental building permits within, let's say, a year as an outside date. Then when you get a end lender to finance a home sale that, you know, maybe you're the broker on, you might have the secondary market saying that decision says this unit no longer exists if this guy doesn't pull his permit in a okay, year. So let's not tie the two together. Let's leave the, the rental components all by themselves because I agree it could affect his financing if he has if we tie the two together. Let's leave the rental buildings all by themselves. Let's just get ourselves the little bit of protection that doesn't cost him anything. Because it's not that way in the decision. The two components are tied with so many features you can't do one without the other. They're too, they're too married to one another. We can't simply ask him that he require, require him to pull the building permits for the rental units within a year, that without tying it to his sales of anything else no. or his financing no. for anything else. No, according to the, uh, we have to give him three years, right? No, just to pull the permits. What, can we do uh, that? I, I, you can't dictate timing uh, for the developer, even though David and I have disagreed on a number of items. <laughs> I, don't, I don't disagree on this one. His, you have aligned interests. He wants to get that rental housing underway. It would be scary to me to proceed on the for sale if I were not feeling very comfortable that that rental would go forward. And I think your safeguard is in your WWTF, in your host community agreement payments, your contractual obligation with the town. I think it would have to be a disastrous, and frankly, I'm quite worried with the uh, news uh, from Russia going on, quite worried about financiers. I'm afraid if we hold you up any longer, <laughs> there may not be any for commercial loans. And, and I think, um, you know, we should all knock on wood and say prayers about what's going to happen to the country. But having said that, um, I think we need to get you off dead center here. Mr. You started the, the discussion tonight is that, that we're going to review the decision. We've already had <coughs> many meetings <coughs> discussing all the elements and everything else. I don't think it's fruitful at this point to go back and start rehashing everything we've already discussed. And, and basically, a lot of the conversation is very similar. Um, I think we're at the point, and the Cobbs draft decision has been out, as we said the last time, he had until February 20th to make comments. Um, the we information says that comments, comments have not come through forth from a lot of the board members. <coughs> Some board members have, and the you know, between Omni Properties, Mr. Barchant, uh, Omni is you no know, um, engineering staff, and whoever else, comments basically been made to the recent decision. I think we need to address the most current decision right now, and see if there's anything else that needs to be changed or whatever uh, that, and that move forward. Ms. Fransworth, I beg to yeah. differ. I said we've already reviewed the decision. We had a deadline for comments from the board. The subcommittee that was that was appointed the task of fine-tuning the decision is finished with the decision. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to call for a vote uh, well, to close well, the hearing and I a vote I on the decision. I beg to differ that because 
I didn't get the latest copy that supposedly came out today. Bill, but, but we're, we're going to tell okay. you what the four the four points it, were. It, it, and then I just checked. No, to all the notes that I had seen in the emails back and forth, uh, just one little clerical question I have. Otherwise, I'm all set with it. Go ahead. On the procedural history, you know, on the last next to last you know, last line, the continuous sessions of public hearings on. December 19th, 2013, January 7th, 2014, and February 12th. And that says, and voted to close the hearing on March 3rd. Should that not read January 7th, 2014, February 12th, 2014, and March 3rd? Yes. Uh, it, it should, should it not be the same language that we have under public hearing at the very um, end saying here the, the meeting hearing dates? period in the next statement, the last statement, the ZBA voted to close the hearing on the public hearing on March 3, 2014. Yeah, if that's what happens tonight, yes. Okay, that, to me, because of all the notes I have and everything else, I know past laudable mm -hmm. and everything else has been corrected and all the technicalities and things and everything else, but that's the only thing I have other than that. Um, and we're going to just go over the last things that happened. Uh, today, so that you're satisfied with that, and the board's satisfied with that. <coughs> Can I read on with me? Sure. Picked up. And the, the date on this now is 3-3-14. The date on what? Uh, decision. decision. Yeah. So if we vote a decision, I want to make sure the vote is to a decision with the exact date. Yep. I just want to make sure all our I's are dotted yep. and T's are crossed so we don't have a, a problem later on. We've, we've gone through this so well already up to this point. Chris, confusing, but are there not two, three days, three, 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 uh, Yes. There are. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about tonight. So. Do you want to speak to just the changes from the 225-14 draft? That would have been what you circulated last week. Circulated last week. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So page by page. I don't have it page by page. Okay. So I'm going to go. I'm. I'll see if I can do it and bring it to it. Okay. So the 3-3 three, three date uh, bill that you just mentioned in the procedural history, uh, it said close the public hearing on 3-3 three, three, and Bill wants it to say uh, continued hearing was 3-3 three, three, and then we closed it. So we had some more discussions. The, yep, yeah. the, okay. In uh, number seven, I think there was a mistake that uh, it said WWF instead of WWTF and they could change. Right. That was just a typo. In well, the decision, the decision you're going to have the date inserted. The dates inserted. Yeah. yeah. Well, today's dates inserted. Yeah. And it's blank. It has five in favor and zero opposed. Right well, now, but so the number we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. Now, we don't know what it's going to be. Point. Point here that if there is any opposition. Where does that get noted? Because the vote has to be recorded if it's not, you know, first by person, if not full. Oh, You'll get zero. it. You'll get it in there. Okay. All right. Well, that would be at the end where it gets signed? Uh, it, this decision does not contain a uh, place to record the vote of each member. Right. But I can add but, that. But if there is, then it would yeah. have to be indicated as such, correct? Uh, I'm not familiar with that requirement, but if you would like it I've to. Seen Seen all the stuff I've ever been taught and experienced with ZBA decisions and planning board decisions. If there's a negative vote, it has to be recorded as such as to who made the negative vote. But, all right, we'll put it in. Okay, number 11 on the uh, see this for a second. conditions. Okay. Are we on conditions? Conditions, number 11. I think, Bill, you already addressed this one. Um, we took out... 
So you have yeah. The word applicant was correctly misspelled. Yeah. The word applicant was misspelled in number 11. And what came out? Um, the last sentence. What page are you on? Uh, it's was, not. Was pages revised. probably won't help you. I'm on page 11, but it's condition number 11 when you get to conditions. Keep going until you get to conditions and go to number 11. There's a deletion here, Chris. In addition, the applicant shall construct all affordable units with garages consistent with the relevant wildflower meadow home plan and exhibit. That got moved that's to fine. Okay. 66. Okay. So that's still in. It just got moved. Yep. Fine. And then um, in the end of this one, there was some comment about the agreement was going to be submitted for review. And the actual way this happens is that the agreements have to come to us, but we don't review them. They get reviewed by the um, regulatory agency. And so we just took out. Well, well the, 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 the last language. sentence was changed through, I think, Chris, and you have it in front of you. Um, the applicant shall submit the final approval to uh, application or applications in the regulatory agreement or agreements to town council and to the ZBA for its information. Yeah, not There's for There's a discussion review. about your review, review or approval and right. whatever else, and that's how that, that got changed. Okay. So then we go on to 14A. Minor again. Um. Yeah, after the subsidizing agency, there was a comma, and the word and came out. And then next line down at in, in every private condition 11 comma above <coughs> there we go and in the language added and provide evidence of saying to building commissioner yeah yeah and, that was so just just and the last part of 14 now says subject to the approval of the subsidizing agency yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. and we got to 45, and this is just, I read this tonight, we already went over it. It was the insertion of, if we approve this decision tonight, it's going to be subject to places satisfying graves on all of the comments and that they went back and forth on. Wasn't there a formula that was added in here? A what? A wasn't there a formula that was asked for before as to how to figure for the... That is in... Additions is somewhere else. Oh, that's another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number six. Yeah, okay. So then we go on to number 63. You added the word, maybe Ed added this word, given to households that meet one or more of the following preference criteria. Mm -hmm. So that you give a, a, a preference to applicants who meet preference criteria. That would be Littleton residents, I think. And, uh, it was just a word missing. Yeah. 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 And then there was a correction. And then the editorial. an I on the next page where it's six, 63. So on, on small. Back up. Yeah. One small I. Yeah, that's. Okay. I'm I, sorry. And and change that. A yeah. Littleton resident. Okay. Sixty three small I. It's a typo. It was changed from Ann Littleton resident to A Littleton resident. Yes. Okay. And the full paragraph after sixty three I I I. Yeah. Uh, Ed made a correction. It said fair marketing regulations, and it's supposed to be fair housing. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah yep. fair housing regulations. So that was just a typo again. And then um, on 66, um, this kind of went back and forth with Jeff's subcommittee, but essentially uh, the wording is supposed to allow the buyer of affordable units to choose from the allowable models, meaning those models which fit on the site rather than <coughs> available <coughs> models. As, as, as shown, shown on Exhibit E. And then there was a, another statement that got added in there. Yeah, on, the applicant shall construct all the affordable units within the for sale component of the project with garages consistent with the relevant wildflower meadow home plan on Exhibit E. That was yeah. so that the affordable units um, essentially aren't looking more affordable than the market units, and you worked hard on that. Okay, so then we go to 74. Uh, yes. Sorry, there was the, uh, two things on 66. Uh, we were going to check to see if the reference uh, was correct on that first paragraph in 66. I just don't know if 
those units show on those plans. Maybe that's for you, Sue. Yeah. On 66. Yeah, that, that did. The pages did come up. Is that that the was the reference it should be to this, a site plan? We had on the building envelope plan, that was where we had the unit number highlighted. Yeah. And that that's what it's called here? Yeah, we called it BE. Okay, yes. so that's one of the big sheets. That was one of the big sheets, and we Fine. called it BE Good. because it's the building envelope. Thank you. Okay. And the only other, in that second, third paragraph, I don't know if you were able to check, Sherry, and I don't disagree with the intent. What it said was, buyers will have a choice, but if there are no buyers, we can't slow down the process. And I had suggested that if they do that, they should build the affordable unit that's indicated with a zero as the designated unit they were planning to build on that same plan, instead of having absolute so choice. Ed's proposal was if there's no, if the lottery is undersubscribed and you have to build on a ratio of oh, so many affordables to every market, so you get to pick which affordable unit goes on the lot, Ed is suggesting that you be restrained from building anything but what's shown on the hypothetical because that will ensure that you don't do exactly the same affordable on every single lot. I don't care personally. I it didn't matter to me and I said I would defer to Jeff because you were the housing committee that decided I, that. I think it's thing is I mean you constructed this you know this uh, sheet showing I well anyway I agree with it so wait, is that incorporated in here yet or does it need to be I don't know so it, well, could be, be. It, it could be some simple language that if in fact there's no buyer and the and they want to continue building proceed, the, yeah that's fine just build the one that's designated with a zero in Exhibit E. What if the one designated as a zero in itself, because you've chosen something that an engineer put on a piece of paper, then aren't you really deterring yourself from your ultimate goal, which was to get the houses sold? Well, I thought you had. In my in my thought was. I mean, in terms of the mixture, it's my only. What thing. if what if one of them is so popular that yeah. it's easy to build and it's a cookie yeah. cutter and you can keep turning it out? Why wouldn't you do that? So I, I didn't want to constrain them. I, I think yeah. we've gotten we've because gone a they long planned, way to they say well, these are the ones. They're, 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 they're the ones who made the exhibit. Yeah, but we they made, made it. The but they made it as random. Random as a guideline. No, it wasn't to you. random. So it was random. There it was, was obviously some thought. Well, well, there's some thought in terms of it fitting yeah. on each site. Absolutely. And yeah. also, you guys went back and forth a lot over what plans were. Well, we chose two plans on on two lots. You selected the rosebud and said that they had to be constructed. The yes. rosebud was the accessible unit, and you picked the lots that those two go with. So mean, that leaves twelve that are essentially chosen by the buyers if we have buyers. I'm a little less concerned because there are only three models. Yeah. One of those is a two-bedroom. Is the pesto a two-bedroom? Correct. Yes. So we know two of the lots are going to be pestos because they're at the entrance. So the three bedrooms are limited to the Rosebud and what's the other three bedroom? I should know this. Fox, 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 Fox Club. So, so it's, it, I assume it's gonna be a Fox Glove or a Rosebud for nine of the units. So what difference does it make if it's if a they're fox all rose but if they're they're fox right. I mean, And I was concerned before them. that we'd end up with pestos, but you can't do that because the pestos a two bedroom unit. So you're so all right I'm leaving a little this. Less, I'm less concerned. So are they I would like I would like to think that we could try to get some mix uh, in those, but again, I'm not going to argue with the market as long as there were. I'm happy with a rosebud or a fox glove. I mean, the the only the only issue, Sherry, is that. Or the you know the board is that if all of the affordables are the same model, they then become marked as affordables in the context of the. It, well, if there aren't other market fox gloves, which there probably there, there will be. There may be, so but there may not be. It, it, so. That's that's all. That's that's the concern. You know. And my response to to Ed's comment earlier was, some of our most desirable neighborhoods in Littleton are all identical models. Look at Snow Village and look at 
uh, they had one road were all capes I mean they, they were all identical homes oh I know well but that would be the case if they were building all the markets as one model but anyway I uh, may not if you got Foxglove and Rosebud as the two three-bedroom models right? I think if we've got the if those two are the options you're all right. I'm, I'm less concerned. And he has to build one of those two because the number of bedrooms. Right. And he's required to build. He can't, only he three can't. affordable types. Okay. So and he can't say, okay, wait a minute, I'm going to make that a two bedroom. It's it's permitted for a three bedroom, but I'm going to make that a two bedroom. He can't do that. Is that correct? Correct. There, there's a limitation in the affordable units. There are twelve affordable units. Nine are three, three bedrooms. Three are two better. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So now we go to page. The next item was seventy four. Seventy four. And seventy four. I sort of want to play the Tim Goddard card and put it on hold to the end. But seventy four says that if we if we decide <laughs> if we render a decision tonight. Um, it will expire three years from, and the choices are three years from the decision tonight, which is the amended comprehensive permit, or three years from the original comprehensive permit, which was already a year ago, so that would make it two years from tonight. So I want to put that item on hold because it's going to generate some discussion. Well, the main thing is the word amended came out. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's why it's, whether we say it's three years from the original decision or three years from this amended decision. Okay. Um, number 83, um, I think I just want to say that this has gone back and forth so many times, I almost, I almost hate to have you read it. I'm going to try to tell you what I think it says and what it's supposed to say. The developer is going to be responsible for all of the infrastructure such as the common components, the roadways and the landscaping and the maintenance and all that stuff. In 83, it says once the development is turned over to the rental component on, on the rental management company on the rental component and the condo association on the for sale component, the developer's responsibilities end. And then I asked to put in some language that says maybe the developer's responsibilities should end, but the rental um, ownership and the homeowners <coughs> association would have continuing liability to the town for managing those things because we don't want the, the developer to walk away and then the homeowners association comes crying to us and saying please town you take it over because we don't have a strong agency so that goes without saying so I had put the WWTF in there too and the developer commented back to me that the WWTF is going to be run by the rental component and an entity running the WWTF right. and does not want the homeowners association to bear ongoing liability for the WWTF because it's not the way it runs. Each unit owner will have contri contribution required to the WWTF. So what all this paragraph says in essence is developer will be liable until he turns over management. When he turns over management the respective entity that's responsible for the management takes over the management of those things. After turnover, the homeowners association will be responsible for the common infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, and the wastewater treatment facility operator will be responsible for the operation of the wastewater treatment facility. Correct. The, the, the management entities and the homeowners association share those responsibilities up until the point of turnover. Correct. So that's just a lot of so why isn't language that re redrafting that we went through just to get to that result. So why doesn't the homeowners association have any responsibilities to the septic system? Because but the rental one does. The homeowner does. They just pay the bill. They pay yeah. the bill to the WWC. So they don't. They don't. They don't pay the homeowner association, which then pays it. They just pay it directly. If you're connected to it, you pay it directly. Your store is not included in your in your condo fees. Okay. If you have one of those homes. You pay like you pay for town water here. You pay, to but the, the rentals the obviously have it's included in their rent. The rental building will be a contributor to the WWTF dollars right. 
in proportion to their number of so, flushes. So, so this <laughs> reflects the way DEP approved it right. and, and approved the easement agreement that covers all of the property uh, serviced by the wastewater treatment plant. Right. So, so is there some kind of meter? <laughs> yes. For yes. people, how much, how much they flush? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a metered thing, right? Uh, actually, it's it's not. It's 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 by regulatory capacity. So every bedroom requires 110 gallons a day of regulatory capacity, and it's divided up that way by the number of bedrooms. Hmm. Most, <laughs> most sewage places, it depends on your water bill. They figure water in, water out. Yeah. 84 just had a typographical error corrected. And then, are we worried about the low income of this being the sewage treatment being cost prohibitive for low income? Or is that not a this issue? part of the formula we've talked about before? If, it, if it's part of the condominium fee, it's part of the formula. If it's not part of the condominium fee, it's not part of the formula. <coughs> so, so that's one of the reasons the applicant would prefer not to be part of the condominium. Homeowners Association fee. Just took this. Just took out a paragraph. Okay. It works paragraph differently paragraph. based upon the type of housing. Oh, no, it didn't show yeah, no, we, I mean, Just to be clear, we, we spent a lot of time with DEP uh, drafting an agreement which they approved, and you know, this is this is how it's done. And actually, we gave no thought at the time to whether it was in a condo fee or out of the condo fee at all. The way. Uh, the establishment of the maximum allowable sales price works. If it's a condominium or a homeowners association, you have to deduct whatever those costs are to derive what the sales price is. If it's a single family detached house, utilities don't enter into it. It's just a difference uh, between those two types of building types. Doesn't make any sense. Is there any way? It should be one way or the other. Is there any way to protect the situ from the situation of having an elderly couple in a two-bedroom house that's under subsidized housing and yet it's being hit with a sewage bill that is un un unfeasible for them? They're going to have the same sewage bill as every two-bedroom home in the project, mm -hmm. and so they would have to analyze that cost of home ownership to determine whether or not they can afford this house at all. Okay. Right? Right. So they're, they're I mean, I'd like to argue right. that that it should be part of the formula in establishing the price, but that's not the way the housing program works. And Dave is going to say that's not the way it works. Okay. 94. Um, we have said uh, the affordable units within the for sale component shall be owner occupied. We had had in there, except for bona fide temporary absences. And Ed points out that the deed rider uh, required by the regular by the subsidizing agency already describes what is a bona fide temporary absence and how long people can be away without it, uh, without the unit uh, failing. So there's no reason for us to double speak that in this section. Um, so that language was added in in the and the, and the temporary absence was deleted. That's correct. Yeah. And the executed deed rider was added in. Ninety six. That's new. That's is new. new, and that's because the applicant presented the specifications for the market units and the affordable units to the your committee, I think, the housing uh, style committee, as well as to the decision committee, and Bill insisted that it be uh, referenced in this decision. Um, so it says all the affordable units will uh, be constructed substantially to the specifications and the same general level of quality as was represented to us during the uh, meetings leading up to this decision. Okay. Yeah. And Sherry, mm -hmm. uh, Bill had asked, and I hadn't. I had forgotten. There were, in fact, specifications outline specs submitted for the rental project. Um, in the initial packet you sent us for both the apartment buildings and in the houses. Yeah. And I think those are referenced now in the exhibit. That exhibit. Yeah. So we're good on that. And, and, and the old 96 became 97. And then the old 96 became 97. So, so, then, so then the Go ahead. You go ahead. On the exhibit B, 
where the plans were listed, the Wildflower Meadows Single Family Home Plans. The, it was listed as Wendy Welton, comma, Art Form Home, comma, Architect. That got changed to be Art Form Architecture, I believe. Uh, Wendy Welton, comma, Art, Art Form yeah. Architecture. To be consistent with all the drawings that we have. And we don't know that Wendy Walton is an architect, so therefore we cannot put it into such. She, she is. But nowhere in the literature does she say that she's an architect. She's not signing anything as a Wendy Walton architect. So because of that, you no. Know, so okay, I just I, want you to know and feel comfortable. Okay, what I what I what I suggest is that change exactly the way it is on all the plans on the copyright 2013. The, the other thing is that for the listing of the civil engineering plans. All the capital A's in the plan went to small A's, had to go back to capital A's. Again, in technicality, let's make sure that we're referencing a plan page number. We get it absolutely correct. Can I ask a quick question? And one question that I have, after the listing of the options and everything else, the very next page, just references Village Green 40B Corporation Permit Amended Application, and then it goes Wildflower Meadow Home Plan. Is that page absolute necessary, or what does that mean? I left it in, Bill, because I, th I, I think it's referring back to all of the. So we've got the chart showing the various units and where they're going to go. Um, I think the plans just circles back to the plans where these units are shown. So. All right, so if that stays, the line for Wildflower Metal Home Plans, comma, January 24th, comma, 2014, at Home Plans, I think I ought to stop it right there and take out the Wendy Walton Architect on the February 14th, 2014. I did that. Oh, okay. And then we have um, Exhibit G that's attached. No? Correct? Correct. Okay. Which is specification for the Wildflower Meadow, uh, January 24th, 2014. Which, by the way, is the exact same thing that we were given at the very beginning of the hearing. There's absolutely no changes except that somebody just added a date. So, Cheryl, you wanted to ask a question and I asked you to let Bill finish this time. You know, it was answered. Thank you. Okay. Oh. okay. Um, let's go back then to the one thing that's still outstanding and why we have two versions of the 3 3 14 decision. Because we typed one with the two year, uh, one with the word am uh, amended decision and one with the oh. not amended decision. That I've actually got one page that I can swap. Whether, <laughs> whether we have three I can swap out. So um, this would be appropriate to discuss before we close the hearing. So who wants to leave? We talked about this in the original, when we did the original, because we do have some choice. We had a choice then, whether to do two years or three years, as I recall. Um, I, you know, I don't want to pile on, but I, I think I would go for two years, since, you know, or, or, or you're saying that we have the choice of doing it from the date of the original Three years from the date of the original, I think that's what I would consider. Jerry, I'm more inclined to start fresh and go with three. From this, from yes. this date. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree with John. I think that we should pick a date, draw a line on the sand, and if today is more convenient, or whenever we actually approve the decision, go from there. And Cheryl. I think that this has all come in as a modification of the original plan, and we've done a huge amount of work in rushing this through in four months. I think we need to go back to the original date and go from there. I think that if he needs to, he doesn't have to finish it within the original date, he just has to pull all the permits. Is that correct? He doesn't have to finish the whole thing, he just has to pull the permits. I think what we're talking about is do we go to the back of the original day and give it X number of years, or do we go to today's day, like, and give it one year less than the others? No. I mean, I, are we talking six and one and a half dozen of the other? No, because okay. we're talking about three years from the original yeah. date, which was the original 
up, the question is, do we give him three years from the original decision, which is what, which is effectively two years from today, yeah. or do we give him three years from today? The original decision was three years from okay. that day. Or, or we could restate it to, third option, two years from today. Well, that's the same as so giving three years from That's what I'm saying. Are we talking about six or we go two years? years? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what, however, I think we should... That's still more than three today. years, the alternates. And then, no. That's still no. more than three years from the original date. Alan, what do you think? Three years from today. Three years from today. Rod? Well, <coughs> I think it's logical to say it's three years from the beginning, <coughs> from the first one. They can always come in and ask for an extension. Chris, but I could go either way. Patrick? I go along with that. With what Rod just said? Three years. From the original or from today? Today. Three years from today. We're yeah. pretty split. Let me, let me, I think we should ask the applicant if, mm -hmm. you know, three years from either the original date or two years from today, is that feasible to be, no, we ask them to, to start or complete. Um, is, is that reasonable? Because if we careful, we don't throw something in there, it's going to be but wait a minute. too unreasonable. That begs so, the question. No, I want to. No, I want my question answered, Bill. If the th the when we gave him three years for this permit, it's not that the entire thing has to be finished in three years. It's that the building permits have to be pulled within three years. Is that correct? correct. So he and does not have to finish. I'm asking, what are we asking for the three years of? So I mean, you're not dictating when it has to be done. Is that you're what? saying the permit is valid until that point and must extend it. So he would need to pull his permits within that period. Otherwise, he doesn't have a valid comprehensive permit. So he doesn't have to finish the whole no. site. So I, I, I would, um, <coughs> since Bill asked, I would ask that you make it three years from the signing of this decision. And the, you know, we are demonstrating uh, with our investment dollars that we expect to pull the building permits inside of that date. This outside date is, is there to protect us, our lenders, and investors uh, in the case that we have an unforeseen event. And by shortening it, you know, two years, you know, from the original date, you're making it harder to finance, and you're actually hurting the possibility that we'll get the town back over the 10%. You know, we wouldn't be investing the dollars that we're investing and the time and effort if we didn't expect to pull building permits well within that time frame. This is an outside date. It's, again, meant to protect us, our lenders and investors um, for a black swan event like happened in 2008, like could happen because the world capital markets react to you know, conflict between Russia and the rest of the country or Syria or some other thing that none of us in this room can foresee and you know that's the purpose and I'd, I'd ask you to to, um, uh, to make it three years from from when this is signed um, okay. I've tried bending over your direction every time I can and this one is bothersome because you've asked us not to have any qualification on when you can pull the for rent building permits and this three years now would really prolong that I would make the language about extension softer but I'd really like to give you and your investors an incentive to pull those rental permits building permits within two years not three years um, it now says um, we'll grant an extension of the three-year limit for good cause shown. There's no reason why we would fail to grant that extension if there were any one of these contingencies that befell this project. But if you're truly ready to pull... 30, 30 months make you feel better? Yeah. <laughs> it would. You know, fine. Right. We, we, you know, I'm not spending, and I'm personally writing out checks, because I expect this to go 30 months or three years or whatever. I am trying to make this the most financeable decision I possible. I know, and I don't want to, I, I really am trying not to micromanage your housing styles. I'm trying to not I, micromanage I that. every single 
aspect of this project, but the comment tonight that, that caused you some angst about getting those rental uh, buildings permitted is valid. So, it, you know, one other clarification needs to be in here. Everybody keeps saying pulling building permits. That's kind of a little misnomer because it depends on who's asking the question, who's looking at it. It's either applying for building permits or obtaining the building permit. And there can be anywhere, roughly a month to two months process in there, depends on how it goes. So I think that needs to be part of obtaining. So yes, to, it doesn't, if in, if we weren't here and we were all back to the original decision, that was, would it be now a, a year and a month into, 13 months into the original decision, if he had just requested permits a month before it expires, but hadn't obtained them, then it doesn't count? Doesn't count. Doesn't okay. Count. So he would, and how long does it usually take to obtain such things? Let's give, let's give it an extra months. month. Let's 30. say two years from today or next month when we sign this. Let's, let's um, you know, let's yeah. give him the extra a little bit of time. Yes, John. Well, the, the thing is, if, if he was just coming in, and this was getting approved. We would give them three years. Right. Okay, now the proper problem is if you go to two years, in two years from now, if he needs an extension, which we'd have to come before the board, a lot of the members on this board could be different. They could change. And it could affect whether they give it to him. I, I think it's, we want this thing to move forward, and I think with another little stumbling block, I, I think you, you gotta have faith in the developer at some point. I, and I understand about the rentals, but. I, just, I think you're throwing something at this guy that we wouldn't do to somebody else. And, and he's probably most likely to move forward of all the 40Bs we've had. The last 40B we only gave him a year. No, no. No, 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 no. We gave him, no, we gave him one year. No, no, no. On it was start within three and complete within five. No, the one on yes. Goldsmith we gave him one year and he accepted oh, that, it. That was 20 units. Okay. Right. So, yeah, John. Uh, well, that's just my, I just think you, all right, you wanna, if you want this thing to, to happen, I think we really got to be careful about every step we take. And I'm just, I want this thing to move forward and be successful. Yeah. And I, I, why not give them the three years? Because like in the said, meantime, we're going to have other 40 Bs in front of us. I still, this is still going to stop the other 40 Bs. They, these other developers know what's going on with this development. And this thing's moving forward. The, the money's there. Another 40 B isn't going to come in and override this one. Not going to be a lot of people with the kind of no. money that this applicant has laid out. This is a good development. In it's in a good location. Yeah. My God, we've been working on it for five years or whatever. Yes. A bunch of little twelve-unit ones. Or okay, so let's uh, pull pull the board on this one. Uh, not a vote. I just I want to pull the board on this one. John, you're in favor of the three years from yes. now. Uh, Jeff, did he change your mind? Um. John is always the voice of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He just That's changed my mind, too. <laughs> um, John, I think because you're in the trenches and you know what the process is and how. And but build, but, but I do have a comment about obtain versus apply. I don't understand why we can't use apply. Obtain, ob obtain gives. Let me explain that. I've seen a lot of people, I've seen some decisions that says you have to make it apply. Mm -hmm. It's like subdivisions of whatever else. Mm -hmm. At the last minute, the last day, somebody run in with a half-faked, simple permit application okay. and nothing else. Yeah. Oh, we made the application, we covered it. And then they take six more months before they actually come in with anything. Well, so but on the other hand, the, the key if, they, if they apply during a time when the building inspector is out for three weeks or something. But, but, but once the application <coughs> is in, by state building code, and you know this, there was a time limit by which the permit has to be issued or constructive issued. Yes, perspective so, issue, yeah. again, it's, it's a matter of making sure okay. all the bases That's are covered fine. and it comes in and, and it's. It's version. Well, e e even so, that, that even if you made a distinction between applying and obtaining the building permit, the, the state law makes no distinction between those two. It's obtaining that counts for getting the, if it's a countable 
uh, units on yes. the inventory. It's when you obtain the, the building permit that the town actually gets to count it again. We, it's of no significance when, when the application occurs. Right. So that's why I would say that the, the language in it has to be obtaining the building permit. Because the discussions going around just said polling, 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 and that was a clarifying so. I still think it's well within reason to ask him to obtain the building permits within two years, especially on the rental units, because until then, we are open to any 40B little ones. They don't have to be huge ones, Bill. They can be the little ones like are in Goldsmith. They can don't be. Don't address the domain. They can be any of them. Well, no, you're the one that made the comment that we won't get that, won't happen because other people don't have the money. They see this oh, is I didn't say that. No, I said that. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so we have so. pulled the board and the. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan, you did pull it. So three years. Three, three years from now. And Rod. And Rod was two. It's going to take what it's going to take. Two years, and then they come back for an extension of three years. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Patrick, you said I agree three. with that. Yeah, you said three originally too. So, I think the consensus of the board is to go from three years from the comprehensive uh, permit, not the amended comprehensive permit. No, I'm sorry. From the amended comprehensive. From the amended comprehensive. I think. Permit, comprehensive I think yeah. Not the comprehensive. I think all I need to do is add the word "amended" back in, and then okay. that'll do it. Okay. So, um, I would now entertain a motion to close, unless anybody has any last things to say. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to close. The hearing? Second, hearing. please. Oh, second. All those in favor of closing the hearing aye. signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the hearing is closed. Now, um, I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, approve the. Let's see, what do we have to call it? Motion to approve. The admitted decision upon application of 15 Great Road 2 LLC. Um, decision revised and dated 3 3 14. That's your motion? I make the motion to approve as did. As, uh, as amended today, 3 3, yeah, 3 right, 14. Right, and dated 3 3 14. Second the motion, please. Second. All those in favor, signify by any, saying any aye. Further, does that make sure there's no further discussion? Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Do I do this one yeah, at a time, Paul? Okay. So Jeff is an aye. John? Aye. Bill? Aye. Cheryl? Opposed. She's opposed, and I'm an aye. So four in favor. I have a statement. And then we have the... Uh, and it's only a majority vote, not uh, it's three out of the five. Yeah, so we have four out of five, but uh, Cheryl would like to make a statement <coughs> about her opposition. Go ahead. I believe that the for sale component is too diverse, with the vast majority of the subsidized housing being lo located in the large apartment buildings. And I think the large apartment buildings are out of keeping with the area. And instead of being inclusive of low-income housing, it creates more of a separation. I think those apartment buildings are just too big. And I wrote it down for you. So the decision will be amended. I, I make the motion that the decision be amended to reflect that there were four A's and one nay, and indicate the number of voting. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You want to vote for that? He's yeah, I, I said yeah. aye. Okay. So now, do I sign it anyway? What's up? Yes. Pardon me? Do you want to sign it? I think we should sign it tonight. You're going to make the one page. I can make those changes without affecting the and that how it looks with respect line. to your signature page. Fine. Now, am I required to sign it even though I'm opposed it? Yep. Really? That sounds No. Oh. I don't believe you are. I don't know the answer to that. I, yeah. I don't know of any rule of law requiring you a, 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 a vote in opposition to sign the decision. Four votes will do it. Okay, thank you. You don't so want to at least like listen to the decision that four members are signing it, is approving it, somewhere it should not be stated in there who the fifth voting member was in. We've said that I will add to this decision. Yeah. Oh, okay. A list of all of your names. Okay. 
and whether you voted yay or nay. signature on it. I don't care if I sign it or not um, because it's going to whatever, but I do vote against it. I do want to thank uh, the board for all of its uh, patience and attendance. I know that so sometimes it was hard to make these meetings. They were on odd times and days, but I appreciate everybody's sticking to it. I want to thank all the subcommittees who got together. I want to especially thank Ms. Bergman for making available to us all of the consultants that we had at our disposal, the applicant for footing the bill for all of that. And, um, again, all of your cooperation uh, many times over. I think that you worked hard to try to make this a good project for Littleton. I hope you'll build it. I hope it'll be a good project for Littleton. Thank you. I hope you build it in a timely fashion. And so do I. Yeah. And so do I. And I hope we don't have to see you again. I'd rather not see you again. Front. You're very handsome, <laughs> very personable, <laughs> but enough. Did you get the graves and places that I took Thank you all. Back? Oh, yeah. Good work. Good work. Oh. How's it going? This is oh, yours. Jesus. Thank you. Before we go, before we go from here, we're not adjourned yet. Oh, so I'm going to pick up my daughter. Okay. Well, quickly, he's got to go pick up the kid. Yeah. Good, David. Congratulations. Hey, for board members, um, I don't know if you're aware that the planning board is looking at a zoning bylaw change. One of them is in regards to um, accessory dwelling units. 2,000 square feet. Well, the article of the paper says one thing, but... Can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. I just hope this is the last 40B I work for you on. Oh, oh, thank you, man. As yes. much as I love 40B. Oh. You don't like us? You don't like oh, us? Oh, no, I love you. But your objective is to yeah. get to that 10%. Yeah. Although, that's, as Keith has said, once you get that 10%, you're in absolute control. Yeah. And then you can pick and choose, and you should do that because you can right. build up some insurance. But, but, but you will come back if we need you. Well, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll run back. And you can use this as an example anytime. I'll, I'll yeah. run back, but... If we you need you, we want you. Yeah, you can you. go if you want. Very good. Anyway. It's okay. I think she's good. Yeah. So, anyway, there's a, an article that the planning board is looking at. Um, they're looking for comments and back by March 11th because whenever their meeting is. Um, they want to do what, Phil? It was in the paper. I no, saw no, it no, no, no. Shelly sent it out. Oh, oh well, I saw <laughs> something in the paper about it. Well, yeah, there's an article in the paper and all the details. Yeah. Some of the details are, this is 900 square feet. The, the actual bylaw is saying 1,000 square feet. And this is actually, I think, started by Peter Scott, who came to us and didn't like it because we didn't think his nanny was a uh, appropriate dependent functionally control. dependent yeah, yeah. anyway so they're, they're, they're adding another article uh, 173-59 which comes right after the ones in the bylaw right now 173-58 there's a little bit of wording difference and everything else um, and, and a few more restrictions in them and it's opening it up so that you can have this accessory dwelling for you can rent have it for anybody you want in other words it making it a, a rental property uh, they're also saying 1,000 square feet, which is tremendous. Usually, in most towns that I, most towns that I've seen, I was say that's, I that most towns that I've seen that they have accessory dwelling units. They basically restrict it down to like a 24 by 24 space, which or is a garage, one level conversion. Which or is they relate it to the size of the house that's being added on to. Yeah. That's and they require the in-laws to come in and physically be present and sign something that they're going to live there. Well, this they're saying it doesn't even have to be an in-law. It can be anybody yeah. you want. I know, but we so have to be. Anyway, I just wanted everybody to be anybody aware. Anybody you want you don't charge rent or what? I don't get this. No, so any house could become a two-family. You can turn any house into a two-family. You just have to oh, have a yeah. certain size limitation. Yeah. And, they, and they get some restrictions on here, like your two entrances and exits have to be on the side of the rear of the house, cannot be on the front of the house okay. or whatever. I think the planning board. I understand what awful they're trying to do, but they're going anyway. I just point out that everybody should look at it when was and get comments right? to the planning board by March 11th. If uh, a little last week, yeah. we got when, the public hearing is March 13th. When's our next March meeting? March 13th. Read my writing. I'm not 20th. Which is a Thursday, right? If you can't read my writing, let me know. This is something you would have to go to town meeting, right? 
Yes. I think they'd, I think they'd have a hard time with this. Well, no, because people don't understand what they're being asked. So they wanted to go to that. The wording for all of that is on the... Um, on the planning board page, but I'll send it back out again tomorrow. I mean, it's like the, the buildings that the planning, you know, if you're above a certain size, you no longer have to go to any other board and down. And well, this is still a special permit by the, us. Did they take their power what? out of it? No, it's still our no, no it just is a special permit granting authority. It, and I guess we're, we, well, I guess in one thing that's missing is in the, the table of use, it's not listed, so it doesn't say who it is. While well, you're on that subject, I have one other quick one that Shelley discovered this week. There is a uh, cluster zone that's being favored by the planning board now. They want you to do cluster zone instead of regular houses. And in our table of uses, it says that the cluster, the cluster bylaw waives all the setback requirements. It doesn't really say waives the setback. It says waives the yard requirements. We don't have any yard requirements except setback requirements. So right. Chris's first take on that is that there are no setback requirements now for these cluster houses. Yes. And that's a really bad result because we have one where they're trying to put a 20-foot addition yeah. onto a 10-foot yeah. offset <laughs> or something. I mean, they could literally build right up to the property line on the cluster Was development. Was the yard meant to be... Lot size? No, no, no. Yard is usually defined in zoning as from the property line to the, uh, the building. That's your yard. That's your yard. And that's you your have your front back. yard side yard. And the setback says in the yard, can you be can't no compare. less than. Yeah. Uh, the I yard can be no less than. So, so this is in the existing clusters we have someone wants to add on without setbacks. Yeah, so Roland well, didn't know whether, that's they didn't, crazy. whether they needed to come here for variance. I said send it here for the variance so that this board could weigh in on that problem now yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it is ambiguous where we don't have, quote, a definition of yard. Yeah. Plus your zoning. Uh, but Chris doesn't agree with me. I think he thinks I we've got a common I struggled uh, long and hard to come up with a distinction between a yard requirement and a setback and requirement. Setback requirement. And I cannot, yeah. yeah. They are effectively the same thing. It's That's yeah. a real problem. So it's a big problem. Because yeah. North Pole, we have a well-defined. Years ago, back in the 80s, it was the first cluster ever done in, in uh, Shirley. They had, I actually had to change the zone into the town in order to, to allow it. it. To get it to happen. Yeah. But they were, the lots were third acre lots, but the, the setbacks stayed the same, and you could still meet them. When Roland asked the question, I was positive the answer was going to be yeah. that this normal setback, you, you get to build it at a bigger density in the cluster, right. but your setbacks, your normal setbacks continue to apply. Yes. And then there was this one provision that just, oh. when I read it, um, said, you, there are no yard departments in any cluster oh, yeah. That we got to have that. Now, there's nothing would prevent until the zoning, until we amend the zoning to address the problem. Nothing would prevent the planning board from imposing setbacks in a new cluster as a condition of an approval. I mean, yeah. the, the, so it's the town's not defenseless against a new one coming in. The right. problem is just when they're building out the existing, such as clusters. the one that's next door to this 40B. Well, it's also Mary Shepherd is the problem right now because that has is Which 10 feet from the property line and they want to put a garage on it. So the garage will bring it to the property line. <laughs> I, uh, it was, oh, Chris, no. Chris, it's Chris's not true. Chris's pen. I don't think so. Oh, then it was my pen. Um, oh. Anyway, I especially want to thank you, Chris. I don't know how you put up with all this the last few weeks, not just days. It's been weeks for you. That's what he gets the big bucks for. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's every single <laughs> time. Well. Every single time somebody said, could you take the the and make it a capital T. <laughs> I wanted to rip my hair out, so I don't know how he put up with it. But we I want to thank the subcommittee much. because my implicit confidence in your abilities meant that I didn't have to go through and do all the thank you. Well, I give Bill the accolades for that because we all know that I'm the big picture guy and he's the detail guy. And well, we work said, well together. Sherry that way. said right at the very beginning, Bill's the detail man. Yeah. So I didn't want to disappoint her. Yeah, and, and, and I said. And I've sent Chris a, a several emails. Every time it's just hard to be a bother. I'd you like to make a motion should, to should close the. You should be an English <laughs> teacher in your retirement. I was a building inspector. Okay. With an engineering background. We should have turned the thing off. We should make up. We should make. Yes, we're, we're still on. We're still being broadcast. Uh, well, we're still well, open, and the go. hearings, the meetings. Still I'd like open. to. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Chris.